two, three. Cause I'ma dig deep, I'ma stand tall, I got the grit of the underdog. I'm stronger than you think, I can do this on my own, there's a difference between loneliness and doing this alone. Welcome to the DC Music Rocks podcast presented by the Capital Group Collective, elevating the sound of DMV one conversation at a time. Today's featured artist, Alex Purdy. Did I say your last name right? Um, yes. Good. <laughs> um, I'm really excited. You are a EDM musician and some really cool things about Alex. You are a, the surviving of a quadruplets. That was your fun fact. That is amazing, by the way. I think that that's really cool. <laughs> and um, some of your influences are Labyrinth, John Bellion, Iridescent Window Stickers, and Neon Black Light Paint. <laughs> so yeah, you are, if we read your, if I read your whole bio, you are, what's the word? Weird. Um, in, <laughs> in a beautiful, beautiful way. Um, you know, but but you're like I was trying to find a way to say like proudly weird, um, because you know you really found your brand and found your 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 style. I'm really excited to meet you. I love your music. I found your track, "Can You Skate" on Spotify. Skate that it's a is it there an eight in the title? Okay, and um, and then you sent me a preview of your new cover song, "You Make My Dreams Come True." That's going to be released when your EP comes out pretty soon. Um, it may be out by the time this podcast airs. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, but your music is really exciting. I love it. Um, I love seeing you on Instagram. The videos that you've created to promote your music are like really cool. And um, yeah, just excited to meet you. So welcome. Thank you, Stephanie. It's such an honor and so exciting to be here. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, how would you describe your music? Because I say I say weird, but I mean that in a wonderful way. But how would you? How would, I hope that doesn't offend you. Um, I, but how would you describe your music? And, um, you know. Sure. Well, weird is definitely a compliment. Um, okay, good, good. That's how I meant it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's definitely evolving. I've definitely been drawn to EDM since I'm still learning how to play all my instruments even better. So EDM was kind of like a great entry. And then now I've also been transitioning more into funk and um, punk pop and kind of merging all of them. So this EP is largely EDM pop based and yeah, I would describe my music as just confessional and weird and always changing. <laughs> I love it. I love that so much. And, you know, I definitely see the EDM um, in in your music, which I personally love electronic music and love EDM because that's the kind of music that I put on when I like want to motivate myself. Um, <laughs> so I have the very like, in fact, my new song that's coming out is going to have like electronic is going to be like my first electronic song. So because I love um electronic music a lot so I was really excited to interview you because I have actually been spending you know a few years searching for EDM producers and you're a producer as well I should have mentioned that uh, when I introduced you you're you're like you consider yourself primarily a producer um definitely both I produce my own stuff and I also produce for other people as well amazing cool so hopefully we can get together because I and I I mean let me know if I'm wrong about this, but I feel like there's not as many recognized female producers. Is that true or am, is it just from my impression? I feel like there's definitely a lot more, de definitely a lot more coming up and always, always growing. Which is okay, good. good, good. That's good. Uh, that's the answer I want to hear. So, yeah. oh, hold on. My headphone just fell out. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> this is the technical difficulties of, of a new podcast host. The, uh, <laughs> but I'm, um, I'm really, so that, that's good. And I, and I do see more, more producers, but you're the first that I've met in person. That's an EDM, female EDM producer. Very excited to meet you. Um, and you know, I'm also proud that all of my interviewees are women. So I, I definitely like wanted to elevate your voices and elevate your sound. Um, I, uh, oh, that's what I was going to say when I was listening. So in your Instagram and your, like you, you post, like you create little tracks just for your ads. 
I mean, that takes a lot of effort. So <laughs> everyone you. check you out on Instagram. Uh, what is your Instagram handle, by the way? Sure. It's at Alex Purdy Music. Perfect. So check those out because, um, you know, her Instagram account is brand new, but it's already gotten tons of views and a lot of popularity. And I seriously, I watched your videos like they're very addicting. You like get sucked in <laughs> and you're so cute, yeah. too. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's in quirky. And I, I really love that. So but most of them just featured you talking, you know, el- like, you know, putting the reverb and on your voice just talking voice but then when I heard this cover and it is it's like an EDM song or EDM cover and your voice is EDM style but you're singing and your voice is lovely too so I hope to hear more of that in your EP do you have more where you're singing yes yeah they're all singing the Instagram stuff is just ads that just well can you skate was talking as well so that's why I was curious but no, what, what were you going to say? Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. The ads are just all an experiment just for fun. <laughs> oh, well, you're very talented. And I think that keep doing that because um, they're like I said, they, they are really attention grabbing and cool. And you wear these like um, contacts <laughs> with the cat eye slits or what? how would you describe that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how. Yeah, I love those little little guys. Uh, when I have the money, I'll definitely get different ones. But yeah. Those, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's cool because that means that, you know, that's very on brand for like the quirkiness and weirdness um, that that draws us in. That's like, oh, this is different. This is interesting. I want to keep watching this or keep listening. So was, yeah, during quarantine, the first time I dressed up in the wig and the eye slits because I live with my parents. I just walked in the kitchen like to Catholic, <laughs> the water, and they're both like. My mom was like, that's so creepy. And then and now they're used to it and it's like no big deal, which is great. <laughs> well, your mom was in this recent video that you did, right? And she's totally embracing it. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to dress her up. Would you say that your family is very supportive of your music? Yeah, more and more. Like the more that I believe in it, the more that they're supportive, which is really cool. And, you know, they're always trying to help make it better and give advice. It's really such an incredible incredible blessing to have their support good so advice in a good way because sometimes when people give advice it's not always good (laughs) yeah definitely advice in a good way like my mom will say you need to bring the vocal up or i think you should add some more reverb and i'm like oh is that okay we can we can do that and then um my dad has been reading all these music marketing books it's been our like bonding covid activity which is fun that's amazing that's wonderful yeah. that's cool that you um are getting a lot of support from your family since especially since you live with them so that's yeah that's wonderful and especially during times where like we rely on who we live with more than ever so having support from family um is you know invaluable priceless so um I want to ask you what is your story how did you come to create this music you know who are your influences if you if you have any that come to mind or and you know what what's what makes you you thank you well I started producing music back in 2015 I was going to Syracuse in my I was in my junior year and I was studying public relations. I hadn't even um, been listening to music in a while. I was on a really high dose of Adderall and I was just depressed and I had stopped listening to music for about six months because I deemed it as unproductive. You know, it was that. Mm, wow. Place. You're in that place. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in that place. <laughs> and then my friend sent me this song by John Bellion called Jim Morrison and it just lit a fire in me. And I was researching what DAW does he use, all of this stuff. And I changed my minor because I was starting to sneak into songwriting classes. But my teacher said, you know, for this other class, this recording class, he was like, you can't sneak into this one because it's a lab. So you're going to have to figure something out to actually be registered. <laughs> <laughs> so I changed my minor to English and then just kept learning and like got off the Adderall after college. And then I was living in LA and, you know, feeling really drained from coming off of the Adderall, not having any energy. And I decided to move back home to Maryland to really go for music, you know, really intensely. And that was in 2018. So that's kind of how I got to now. And how, how do you, um, you know, so you said that John Bellion, is he 
excuse me for not knowing, but is he an electronic music artist as well? Yes. I or guess. Like, I where mean, do you get that influence from? Hmm. Well, he's definitely pop. I mean, he's written okay. for Rihanna and Eminem and Jason Derulo. And then awesome. he branched off and did his own stuff. And I mean, the EDM, I've just always loved it. It's so uplifting and I love to run to it. That's it's really my workout kind of vibe. So yeah. that's kind of what's inspired. I love the big saws Ooh. and how anthemic it is. Awesome. And what would you say makes your music and your career unique? I think a lot of people, maybe their view is changing on this, but I think a lot of people view in order for an artist to make good art that they have to be in pain. And I think my... (laughs) (laughs) Plotting this. (laughs) Because I went to such an extreme with the Adderall and was also bulimic for a while and then went to recovery for the eating disorder it was really only after that, that my music started to really feel like me because I wasn't having this front up of feeling like I had to have it all figured out and be a size two anymore. Like I wasn't trying to be this thing that I wasn't. Amazing. I love that answer. I love that answer because, you know, you're, you're taking care of yourself. You're putting, you're putting yourself first and you, and that's, and when you're healthy or at least, you know, on your way, because I, you know, I'll get into this more later, but we don't have to be perfectly healthy to create art. But when we are taking care of ourselves and and healing the best that we can, you know, that's when we're able to better express ourselves and better be ourselves. And yeah, I just, I love that answer so very much. And I think that we need more of that. People are starting to do that more, being proud of being, of being healed and being healing. Um, And, but I do, I do think that that's something that's, that's very special. I'm glad you're offering that to the world. Um, great question. Everyone wants to know, have, have you pivoted your music career this year? You know, have you, you know, what changes have you made or was there a year before this that you've made even bigger changes? It sounds like even before now you had to make some big changes to even begin your music journey, but we also want to know, you know, how have you, um, managed things, you know, the switch to the virtual world, shall we say? Absolutely. I mean, this past year has been definitely really challenging. And I was back in March before COVID hit, I was working as an assistant kindergarten teacher at the Washington Waldorf School and having a really wonderful time there. And then, you know, we couldn't go in anymore. And that's a bummer. So I started to reach out to people about producing for people virtually. There's this app called Thumbtack where you can list yourself locally. And I had also taken this course in how to produce songs for TV, film, and ads and had gotten a couple songs signed to licensing companies. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. So people from that course, since I had graduated from the course in the current cohort, they sent out a list of producers that they recommended these students use. And since my name was on the list, some people reached out. And so I've been getting clients from that um, and just diving into producing for people full-time. That's amazing. So you're a full-time producer and you've got your own music coming out in your EP. What's your EP release date, by the way? It's still being determined, but there is a special, (laughs) there will be a special link for people after this interview if they text CGC to my number, which I'll give at the end for a special Yay, a special benefit for our podcast listeners. Thank you so much for doing that. That's that's really <laughs> special. Uh thank you. And you use your text messages as a way to communicate with your fans, which I think is lovely. Thank you. Um uh, so that's your exciting news and that's what you've been working on. I'm like going through this, our list of questions. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And we have a track that we'll listen to at the end of this interview called You Make My Dreams Come True, which is a cover song. And that's right. I mentioned it because your voice is just so, so beautiful. And but you've also got this really cool, like upbeat, um, you know, pop electro pop going on in in terms of the instrumentation so I was like listen I listened to that a couple times because (laughs) I really enjoyed it so um stay tuned to the end of this podcast to check it out everyone so 
here's my question. Next question. What makes the DMV so special? Oh, I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? You know, at the Capital Group Collective, we are all about elevating our community, our local artists, because we have a lot to offer. So I want to, you know, that's why we're asking our mm -hmm. our interview is like, what why are you why are you sticking around? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I love it here. I mean, I grew up here. I went to Whitman, go Vikes. <laughs> and I'm still really new to the DC music scene, which is why also COVID has been such a bummer because right. there's so many cool venues that I'm still, you know, haven't gotten to go to yet and stuff. But I was just starting to perform a bunch at Gypsy Sally's Vinyl Lounge before they closed, it just in the back, which was really fun. And I was so scared, but. That's great. So, um, how do you perform live? Like if you're an electronic producer, an electronic artist, what's your instrument, what's your setup when you're performing live? Yeah, so I've still been figuring it out and always trying to upgrade it. Right now, it's just me playing to the, singing to the tracks that I produce. Oh, and perfect. that's what I'll do when I'm busking. Sometimes I'll busk on Bethesda Row. Um, and what I want to get to is, you know, pyrotechnics and backflips and flips and all sorts of choreography. So can you do backflips? <laughs> I can do backflips. I can do backflips. Okay, I'm impressed. Uh, I mean, I play to tracks when I play violin and so and sometimes sing to tracks. So that that sounds great to me. Um, so that's really cool. The yeah, still working on it's just on the trampoline right now. There was an abandoned trampoline near my house, but then it turned out someone does live there and I got caught jumping on it. So now I can't practice anymore. <laughs> OK, so Christmas or birthday present for Alex trampoline for your backyard so you can keep doing those backflips. And then I can when live shows are open, I will definitely go see you do a backflip. <laughs> um, on stage that would be that would make my day that that would make my year uh the okay here's the question does the dc music scene receive enough credibility and what would be a major shift that could help us take the next level mm. you know i feel like i still have a a lot to learn about you know just being newly involved in the dc music scene so I feel like it's right now just figuring out more ways to all get involved with each other. And it's, it's a big question for me. I, I want to be more involved and learn more ways to connect and meet everybody. Oh, that's fair enough. If you're, you know, you're new. So, well, I hope I'm hoping that through us at the Capital Group Collective, you know, you can connect with us and get to know the DC community better. Um, and yeah, cool. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Yeah, connecting the the more that I get to really know the people behind the music scene, the more that I'm falling in love with it. So, um, and then our goal is to really put us on the map alongside LA, New York, and Nashville. You know, we want to be up there too. So that's that's our plan. So because I think that you know all all of us here have so much to offer. Yeah. Uh, um, so we talked a little bit about your artistic persona. How would you, you know, I don't, I don't know, like, is there anything that you haven't mentioned about your artistic persona that you could add, uh, <laughs> that you could tell me a little bit about? Like, you know, we talked about your, your cat eyes and, and wig and the kind of the quirkiness of your bio and your, your, your ads that have the graphics. How would, you know, how would you describe that? Hmm. And how did you get into that? You know what? Yeah, well, I I heard this quote once that was talking about once you get one creative idea and you create it, bring it into form, then that gives space for new ones to come in. So for me, first it was, you know, painting my, my speakers in, in my studio here. I painted them neon. So they have they light up with black light and I painted my guitar and then I had the idea, oh, I should paint the drums. And, you know, it's one after the other after the other. And then it's like, oh, I should, should try this thing. So that's kind of been how this whole thing has been developing very slowly, very organically, and just letting myself play because I feel like for a while, because of the Adderall and the bulimia, you know, I was really just trying to shrink myself and 
getting out of that has helped me really feel like I can creatively express who I am, faults and all. I I love that you're so open about, you know, your, your, um, well, bulimia is technically a mental illness. And like, for me personally, you know, I've been asking all of my interviewees about mental health, because that's kind of my cause, <laughs> that especially this year, like, it, it has been ever since I started, you know, taking on music as my original music as a career to speaking out about mental, mental health. And, um, but also, you know, you have, you said that you have ADHD as well. And you can call it what they want, but uh, it's <laughs> fine by me. Yeah, no. And, and that's great. I think that's wonderful. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of medication when it helps, but there are times where, you know, every person is different. And so when they're better without it, I'm, I'm a fan of that as well. You know, you do what works for you and you find what, what heals, what heals you. Cause I've had some, I've had depression this year and I had some medications that have served me and some that I like don't want to touch with a 10 foot pole. So, and it sounds like Adderall was that for you that, you know, that, that you were, you realized that you needed to make a different choice. And, you know, I'm really proud of you for, you know, overcoming bulimia, which is a real, um, real challenge for people from what I've heard. So um, how, how did, can you go into a little bit more of like, how you found, was it through music? And, um, or how did you come out of, you said you seem to be in a really dark place from what you were telling me, you know, how did, how did you overcome that to get to where you are now? Hmm. Well, I think, I mean, the reason the bulimia started was because my boyfriend at the time was like, we should eat a ton of food and then throw up. And you oh. don't realize, <laughs> guys, you know, guys have eating disorders too. And who you surround yourself with can really influence of course. what you do. Especially, you know, I was at school, away at college. I was lonely, right. you know, didn't know how to handle all my emotions and then, you know, I ended up by senior year, I wasn't throwing up anymore, um, mainly because it was the shame of, I just don't want anyone to find out. Like I've got to stop before my teeth <laughs> fall out. And oh, it was that, it was that, it was like, I don't want anyone to know that anything's wrong. I've got to have it all together. So um, I'm grateful I was able to stop before even going to the recovery center. Um, I went to the recovery center in 2018, I need to check. I'm not sure, but um, so it was very amazing. recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very recently because I wasn't, you know, I was trying intermittent fasting and oh, maybe I have a food sensitivity. Just all that. Can can I curse on here? Or no? uh, I prefer not to. But... <laughs> great, 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 great. Hold on. But all of that stuff that's just contr- still controlling, you know, still controlling food as a way to not process emotions. And at the recovery center, the most powerful thing they said was all eating disorders and addictions come from not being able to process your emotions. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. Uh, Makes perfect sense. (laughs) (laughs) It made sense to me. Yeah. I I know, you know, that may not be true for everyone, but that really changed my life in a lot of ways. That's wonderful. I mean, I'm, it's amazing that you had the self-control to like stop yourself, but that you also still, you know, you kind of got past the shame a little bit in order to get better help, you know, get professional help. That's, that's a wonderful story. Cause I always encourage people to get to, to seek professional help because there's a lot that it can do for you. You know, I don't know what, where I would be without therapy. Um, Cause I have an anxiety disorder and, you know, dabbled in depression and <laughs> they said they, you know, there's a possibility of some ADHD symptoms in there too, as you can see, like I can literally never sit still. Um, so yeah, it's cool that you've kind of embraced that about you. And I, I'll bet that that helps, you know, understanding yourself and probably helps you not feel as what's the word, like, like something's wrong with you. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, when I was at the worst of it, you know, I wasn't able to really be close to my friends because I was had so many secrets and right. that's no way to live. So I've realized that some of the most meaningful relationships I have are with friends where we can say anything and oh, still love so each good. other. That is so good. You know, I think that that's true for me as well, because I especially this year, like I've noticed that I've managed to surround myself with 
you know, <laughs> right now you really choose who you surround yourself with, whether it be on social media or, you know, at a social distance. But, you know, like I've noticed that through the years, um, having people that embrace you flaws and all can be a game changer, game changer. So Absolutely. thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And now, how are you taking care of your mental health day to day, especially in a time where mental health is kind of in crisis in general, uh, which is good because I, I in, in a way it's good because people are waking up to this issue. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, you know, oh, yeah, depression and anxiety and ADHD and other things. That's that's for other people. And now everyone, <laughs> everyone is realizing, oh, that, that, that's me as well. <laughs> or that, you know, or that can happen to me. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not saying everyone should have it, but, <laughs> but it's just, <laughs> but just that people realize like, like it's a perfectly human and normal um, experience to have. So I think, you know, so people are, are taking our, what's the word? I feel like people are, are, starting to prioritize their mental health. And so, I mean, have you been doing that and, and how so? Definitely. I mean, I'm really grateful. My two closest friends ha and I have really gotten good at telling each other when something's wrong and we need support. Well, one of us will text, you know, I'm going through this. Can we have dinner this week sometime and talk about it? Or are you free for a call? And it's just such such a blessing you know that to me having community like that is really what success means to me so that's that's been the main way I mean besides you know feeling it in myself and not going to them to fix it but knowing we can reach out if we need to absolutely that's amazing that's well said too because you know our friends are there to fix our problems but they're there to listen and you know having someone that to check in with and to listen to you and help you work things out. That's, yeah, I think that that's a really good cure for <laughs> treatment <laughs> for, for, for our mental health to keep us healthy. Cause you know, and it's, it's easy to get sucked up into quarantine and just kind of like stay in a ball because you don't know how to handle crazy new changes in the world. But, you know, I did that as well. You know, I, when I, got that like diagnosis, hey, you're depressed right now, <laughs> clinically. I'm like, okay, I need to see some people. <laughs> I need to, I need to have my friends back. I need to do things that I love and just do it as safe as I can. But, mm -hmm. but take that risk, you know, of, of going out there and, and having to socially distance, but, but do it anyway, Be, you know, <laughs> even if it's, there's a slight inconvenience to it, it's worth it, you know, to, to be with your friends. That's very good. So I'm mm -hmm. glad to hear that. And it's cool you, that you have your family too. What were you saying? Sorry. Yeah. How have you been taking care of your mental health? Oh yeah. Well, same, you know, I've been, um, for me, I'm, um, uh, I'm really into martial arts. So Kempo karate. And that's, that's, uh, a hobby of mine that I really just is like, a it's therapeutic for me. You know, that was that kind of, and this year really proved it because I kind of took that break from, from martial arts. Um, and then when I was, when they said, oh, you're, you're clinically depressed. Uh, and I went, I started going back because they were having classes at the park, but I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to socially distance. And I've got, you know, with my daughter who's, who's little and like, I don't know if she'll do it, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm like, no, no, no. You know, I, got to put trust in her and trust in them and and take the risk it just so I can be with my friends because they're a very close like community for me and and they are the kind of people that embrace me with all of my anxiety and weird stuff so like I really needed and the art itself is very therapeutic so I really need to do that that was that was has been really huge for me and also yeah um I, I would say that and also music. <laughs> so, you know, having the CGC, I consider them my a family and community as well. And that really helps. I've also like um, church because <laughs> I even like I even stopped like they had a Zoom church and I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. And then I realized like when I start, OK, I'm like, I'm going back to normal as much as I can. Going back to karate, doing Zoom church. It's not how I used to do it, but these are things that I used to do. And that, that kind of helped me get back into feeling myself again. And also the 
amazing support of my husband and so that's all good good stuff so I would just yeah I tell people like don't wait until the pandemic ends to live your life you know I and I'm fully I'm fully supportive of social distancing masking hand washing uh you know following those guidelines but you know just just don't forget to live that's <laughs> that's my advice <laughs> what what you're so you're powerful. giving an excess like a sigh of <laughs> yeah <it's> so powerful <laughs> thank you that's why i'm trying to do what i do and and trying to encourage people um uh would you say that your music is a part of your ther- therapy is that is it therapeutic for you yes and how it's, so it's one of the most therapeutic things for me because it's <laughs> so I've been working with this life coach who's really, really incredible. And who are they? Shout them out. Yeah, yeah. His name's Dan Clearman. If you search him on Instagram at grand.kid, he's also an incredible professional musician, guitarist, amazing singer. I've never heard anyone, anyone play or sing like him. And real savant. Um and so he said, wait, wait, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Um, the question was, how is your music therapeutic to you? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, give me a second. No, take your time. It was, so, it was so profound what he said. I don't want to mess it up. Um, I know I'm wow. putting you on the spot. <laughs> I know, I know. Wait, wait. So we were talking about how is music therapeutic? How is your music <laughs> therapeutic to yourself? I mean, in general, music is therapeutic. Sure. But I, I want to know how your music, like cre- the process of creating and. Oh, yes. So the quote that he had said was music is always there for you, no matter what you're going through or who you are, because sometimes <laughs> we're not sometimes <laughs> we're not happy with what we've done. And we may feel ashamed. We may feel like this really isn't me. But we did that thing that was wrong and music can still be there for us. You know, we can say in a song exactly what we did and why it was wrong. Yeah, he's so that's so good. (laughs) That's so good. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, you know, in in music can be a way of of expressing things that like we might have a hard time talking about, right? But when it becomes a piece of art, you can say anything. Yeah, and then it feels like a breath of fresh air. You know, that thing that was the wound becomes a gift. Mind blow, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I forgot what I was going to say with that too now. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, but you know, exactly. And it even helps us sort of overcome, you know, what we're going through once we've put it out there, right? And uh, and, oh, that's what I was going to say that in that process, like we've realized that more people are going through what we're going through than we thought. I think like when, when I hear people, I recently had someone tell me that a song of mine that I published four years ago, you know, meant something to them. Um, you know, that they, they're, I, they were like, you know, I think that the song talks about anxiety and I'm like, it, I, (laughs) it does. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, because I, I have that too. And I totally relate. And I'm like, that's amazing. So is that, is that something that people have told you about, about your music or, or something that like is a connector between you and your fans? You know, I'm still really new to sharing my music. So I think. True, true. (laughs) Maybe that could be a goal. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely a goal. I mean, that's, you know, I'm trying to just say exactly what the situation is in the songs. So we'll see how that translates. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to hear your perspective and your story through your music. Well, if, if you do have, one message in your EP and in your music that you are creating, what would it be if you had one message that you want the world to hear? Well, my EP is called Reveal Yourself because I feel like everyone can benefit from hearing that. It's such a gift to be around other people who encourage you to be you. And then you'll discover things about yourself and capabilities that you never knew you had and even joy that you never knew you could feel. So that's the message that I hope people feel in this music. That's amazing, beautiful. Thank you so much, Alex, for joining me and for sharing your music. I'm really excited. Everyone check out her EP, Reveal Yourself, coming soon. 
And um, everyone who's listening, thank you so much for joining me on CGC Pre Presents DC Music Rocks. Um, oh, before we end, tell everyone how they can find you. I know that we talked about your Instagram, but could you share all the links? Yes, absolutely. So there's a special, there's a special secret message um, just for people listening to this podcast. If they text CGC to 330-222-8685. And then you can also find me on Instagram at Alex Purdy Music. And thank you so much, Stephanie, for having me. This is such a blessing. Absolutely. So um I so to check out to learn more about Alex, check out her links. And uh, to find out more about us at the Capital Groove Collective, follow us at Capital Groove DC. I'm your host, Stephanie Mathias. Thank you all for listening to CGC Presents DC Music Rocks. Have a wonderful day. What I want you've got and it might be hard to handle Like the flame that burns the candle The candle feeds the flame What I've got's full stock of thoughts and dreams that scatter Then you pull them all together And how I can't explain Where were you? You make my dreams come true Hello?